Hi, everybody. This is Tim Smythe, um, and we are here in week three, and so very happy to have you. We've all been learning a lot from each other through the webinars and the Slack discussions, and I'm very pleased to discuss with you a brief history of comic books and when they were created, particularly here in the United States, but also around the world. So in the webinar, I had discussed about how on the first day of school in my classroom, as a social studies, as a history teacher, I hand out comic books from many different decades, the 1950s and 60s until present day. And I have my students go through and analyze these comic books just like I would uh, have students go through a poem or a diary entry or a letter from a world leader. These comic books were published at a certain time and they tell us a lot about the society in which they were published. So we take a look at the letters to the editor. What were people concerned about? We take a look at the advertisements in the comic book. How much did things cost? What did they look like? How about the technology in the comic books themselves? How many colors do they have? Are, are the covers uh, brightly co uh, colored in? We also take a look at the representation in the comic books. Are they majorly white characters? Are they majorly male characters? Over time, we see that these characters change. They include a lot more representation with women and from people around the world. And so today, we have Thor, who has been a woman, Wolverine, who's been a woman, Green Lanterns, who have been um, Latin American or Hispanic and Black, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so it's a really exciting time to be alive. And so I convinced my students early on in the year that not only are comic books meaningful literature, but they really are windows into our society and the world around us. So we're gonna begin with uh, the cave paintings of Lascaux. So in the lessons this week, you and or your students will be going through and doing research on what is called sequential art, this idea of what a comic book is. It's a collection of images, one after the other, that tell a story. This method of storytelling have, has been with humans for a very long time. So these cave paintings in France, we see that in essence, um, these stories go on and on throughout the cave. So these really are sequential art. They are comic books. You'll be taking a look at examples like these. So we have the Mexican Codex. We have the Bayo Tapestry. We have the Menatum. And what's really interesting, uh, particularly with something like the Menatum, is um, for Western archaeologists, they want to read from left to right, as we would in a traditional comic book. But in a lot of cases, these stories are told from the bottom right to the left. And so you have to be careful and re really pay attention. So an example of the Bayo Tapestry, what this shows us is a, a long part of British history without any words. So you don't have to know how to read and write to understand the history. And this is the power, uh, powerful uh, point of visual literacy. Uh, going through and doing my research, I found that the very first comic book, or maybe the first graphic novel, was created in 1837 in Switzerland. And sometimes research changes, but this right now is predominantly the one that we all agree on as comic book historians as the first one that was published. What's fantastic about this is you see in this comic that there's no dialogue. There is some narrator's words. But for the most part, you really have to take a look at this poor, unlucky character, the look on his face, the background, what's happening with him to really get an understanding of what's going on in the story. And so this is the perfect example of sequential art or visual literacy. The first American, North American in the United States comic book is about 1933 called Funnies on Parade. This isn't exactly a comic book. What they did was they took from newspapers comic book strips that ran every day or every week, 
and they realized that they were very popular. And so they took a collection of these comics strips from the newspapers and put them together into a collection into what they called a comic book. Obviously, it's a lot similar to the comic books that we find today. The Phantom is the first um, American superhero comic book. And we see here, this is a, uh, an example from 1939. The comic book is exactly what we would expect to find today, where we have sequential art. We have the gutters, we have the narration, we have uh, the vocabulary and the conversations, the dialogue balloons. The golden age of comics, this is probably, at least for me, the most famous age of comic books. Um, and this is where the history comes in. So this time period is from 1938 to about 1950. So these early superheroes that are still with us today, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Captain America, were created where um, World War II was either going on or just about to begin. Um, Superman is created during the Great Depression uh, by two Jewish creators, and we know what was happening in Nazi Germany. And so we, here we have this Superman who is looking to protect people. We also have Captain America, who is represented here um, by the red, white, and blue and the stars and stripes. But this comic book was published in March of 1941. The United States did not get involved in World War II until December 7th, 1941. So the United States was supposed to be neutral when this was published. I don't think this is a very neutral comic book cover. And the fact that it was popular in the United States speaks very much to how a lot of Americans were against what was happening in, in Nazi Germany. The Silver Age, 1956 to 1969. Again, when we take a look at what's going on in history, we have the space race. We have the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union and their allies. And so we have Sputnik that is launched in 1957. So this begins to space race in earnest. And so we see a lot of that science and that looking towards the heavens, if you will, we see that in our comics. Peter Parker is created by a radioactive spider. So we also have to understand that too, this fear of atomic weapons and research and what that might do. The Bronze Age is 1970 to about 1984. Um, what we see in this time period is a turn from the Boy Scout type of heroes, the, the goody goody type of heroes to some heroes that were more realistic. Um, a perfect example would be the Punisher. What you have to understand is in the United States, there are protests against the Vietnam War at the time, as there are around the world. But also in 1968, there are protests around the world. And so people are looking for more realistic depictions of who their heroes are. Not only are they more realistic, but we also see a lot more representation in the comics beginning in the 1970s, not just the white male characters. And so we see uh, Green Lantern, we see Luke Cage, we see the creation of Storm, and a lot of other characters. The modern age, 1985 to the present, this is when I really became a big comic book fan. This was my childhood. I really started collecting comics in the early 1980s. Uh, they also call it the Dark Age because it continued um, a lot of the storytelling from the 1970s and early 80s. And a lot of the characters were a lot more stark, a lot more realistic, um, almost depressing in a lot of ways. And Frank Miller's Batman The Dark Knight Returns is a perfect example of that, as is Watchmen. Um, this is an alternative history comic book that I use in my classroom, and people have lost faith in their heroes. In a lot of cases around the world, people lost faith in their governments at the time because of things that were happening. And so this comic book reflects that. We also see in the 1980s and 1990s, uh, new publishers besides just DC and Marvel Comics. We see a milestone, <laughs> which was then bought by DC, but their purpose, they saw a need to have more black characters. We see Dark Horse uh, become a publisher. We see Image Comics become a publisher. 
But then we also see what happened in the 1990s, comics like X-Force. What happened was people now were looking at comic books as an investment. The thought was, hey, if I buy X-Force number one, I'll be able to put it in packaging and sell it 20 years down the road and make a lot of money. Um, we see the first action comics with Superman, you know, has sold for millions of dollars. So comic book companies literally cashed in on this. They published lots and lots of comic books. And so this X-Force, many, many different variations of the same cover were published. So people would go out and buy 10 number ones. People would go out and buy 20 number ones. So the problem was so many comics were being published. Um, that it almost bankrupted all the comic book companies because people lost faith in comic books. But luckily, they recovered, particularly today, where we see with all the movie tie-ins and the video games and everything else. Some fun facts uh, that really speak to the popularity of comic books. So uh, some research that I did in 2018 in North America alone, we sold over a billion dollars in comic books. That's literacy. That's literature. Um, these are adults and children who are buying books that they love to read. And reading is reading. Graphic novel sales have increased 16%, which is fantastic. My own kids have probably bought most of that percentage. Um, one example of manga from Japan is One Piece, and it sold over 10 million copies. That is fantastic. And then I also did some research. I was curious to know where uh, publishers were around the world. And I found thousands of comic book publishers and comic book stores all around the world. And you can see some of them here on this Wikipedia article. Fantastic. Of course, one of the best comics that we have to use is uh, from Dan Ryder and Jackie Garter, the panels and perspective. Share this widely, download it. It's a fantastic resource uh, for educators. And lastly, I want you to think about um, when you leave this video, what's the history of comics in, in your country? Do you know? Um, when did they begin being published in your, in your country? Think about your favorite superhero. Uh, it doesn't even have to be a superhero, your favorite comic book. When was it published? When did it begin? And I'm hoping we can share this because I want to learn more about comic books from around the world, not just in my own corner here in North America. So I hope this video finds you safe. I hope it finds you happy and full of joy. And I really want to say thank you yet again for allowing me to share my passion for comic books uh, with you all. Have a blessed day. Thank you so much.